we're going to start off. You're going to see a lot of rapid fire things of some extraordinary, eloquent, and terrific people. And we're going to start off with two who really don't need introduction, but uh, Tariq Trotter, also known as Black Thought The Roots, in conversation with the cultural critic, historian, journalist, writer, friend, Torre. So please welcome them. Morning. Good morning. All right, there we go. They're in the house. Um, if art, and I want to talk about art with you today, thought. Um, if art is about making change happen, hip hop definitely fits in squarely within that. Since day one, hip hop has been political, has been aggressive. It was, at first, it was very critical of Reagan, then of Bush, lightly of Clinton. <laughs> um, and, but now we're in a really special era, right? A special challenge for the nation. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's funny, but I'm serious. We are in an ongoing national emergency. We just don't act like it every day. But hip hop has historically been a space where folks would warn, would send out ideas around, look out for this. There's, these are the attitudes we need to have in terms of resistance to a Reagan, a Bush, and now a Trump. So is there a responsibility, is there an opportunity that rappers have in this moment uh, to, to shine a light, to sound an alarm, to tell people how to respond in this moment of Trump? Um, you know, I feel like, and we were just talking about this, about uh, hip hop. I feel like uh, that's the job of hip hop. That, that's always been sort of the, you know, one of the, the, the mission statements of, of hip hop is to be, to be informative uh, in that way and to sort of, uh, you know, be that sounding board and, 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 and you know, re re reflect the times and, you know, to, to uh, be critical of, of the culture in that way. But I think what the music has evolved into, in, just in the business has evolved into at this point is, um, is more pop than hip hop. And I don't know that the, the responsibility of the pop artist has always been, you know, the same. I don't know if, uh, you know, the, the mission of the pop artist uh, began the same way that the, the mission of the, of the hip, the hip hop artist uh, did. Yeah, and you uh, feel a lot of distance from that group, right? They, they, yeah. You're like, they're, they're not doing the same thing that... Yeah, yeah, I definitely, I feel, yeah, a, a lot of distance. I, I feel like, uh, you know, the music, the, the hip, the rap music, uh, or the hip hop music of, of the millennial is, um, you know, there's much about it that, that I don't really understand. And I, I was, as I was saying, I feel like it's because it's not for me. Like it's not, you know, being created with my you know, sensibility taken into consideration. Right, right. When yeah. we were 25, we didn't care what 45 year old people yeah, thought. Yeah, exactly. And now we're on the other side of that equation. Yeah. Yep. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, when I was when I was a, a young person, 19, 20, I didn't care what 45 year old people thought. And you know, and that the same thing could be said about people who you know uh, created and 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 who who championed uh, you know the jazz era, you know, b before us. Like, but when, is it just a function of age, or is the millennial rapper doing something fundamentally different that you, as a hip hop purist, is like? Mm, no, nah, that's not it. Well, yeah, well, you know, one thing that the millennial rapper is, is doing, and it, not, this isn't across the board, um, you know, every millennial rapper uh, do, doesn't do this, but lots of them um, you know, have abandoned uh, words, like have abandoned, you know, they don't, they don't use words, <laughs> which... Get, it, some, some of the folks may be receiving hip hop through their kids or what have you. So can you give them just an example of what you mean by hip hop without using words? I mean hip hop without using words. I mean, like literally, <laughs> there's, there are people who are, who are vocalists who go into the booth and you know, don't use any words. You know, nothing, <laughs> no audible word, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, mumbling. And there's... Uh, the mumble rap thing is something that I, I, I was kind of the first person to do. 
Okay. But I did it in jest. You know what I mean? And I did it, you know, just for a chorus you know, of a song where I did rap. There were like three verses, and then the chorus would be, and the name of the song was Don't Say Nothing. So it was about not saying anything, and I feel like that has become uh, the standard. <laughs> to, to flip to the other direction, because I want to talk about MCing in a, as granular a level as I can get as a non-musician, um, you are in love with words and specific words, and yeah. we were just talking about algorithm as a word yeah, yeah. that just sort of appeared to you. They're like, I want to use this, and you're trying to figure out for a week how can I work algorithm into a rhyme. Yeah, I mean, tell them about um, about that. I mean, yeah, you know, me being from that generation uh, of the the hip hopper. The, the artist who was, you know, super conscious about uh, you know, wit and uh, you know, cleverness when, 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 when writing a, a song. Um, yeah, sometimes a word will just come to me that I'll be, uh, you know, I'll just set my sights on using. It's like, I don't know how I'm going to use this word or this phrase or this idiom or whatever, how I'm going to, you know, make reference to it, but I'm going to. And... Uh, you know, I'm constantly working on some verse or, you know, just putting together lines. These words work together, you know what I mean? These lines sort of rhyme. And, um, what did you rhyme algorithm with? Oh, yeah, I, took, I, I had to make up a word, kind of, to get me to that algorithm. See, first, I was thinking algorithm, algorithm. Um, I, should, I should call Alchemist and tell him that, you know, he should do a, a project or a song called Algorithms. And I was like, nah, I'm not giving him that shit. And, 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 you, and, you, and you were focused on a sound and meaning. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, you know, for me, it's as um, it's, it's much about the, you know, the flow of the syllables as, the, as it's about the word that they create. Okay. So yeah, so how I got to, sorry, how I got to the algorithm line, I, um, I started, you know, I guess talking about my origins. Mm -hmm. Now I like to kind of set the tone uh, so that my verses uh, are, are you know, vivid, like a, 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 a visual sort of, sort of narrative. So I said, um, what did I say? I said, things, we, things we've lost in the fire, the drive, the desire to perform on a higher plateau. I'm at a rap show lost in the mire. Wondering how we got so far from inspired. Um, and I say, uh, back when photos were sepia toned and a record player was something you would keep in your home, the night traveler, the meaning of Tariq, he was known for the exemplary performance, uniquely his own, making the 21 pound for some a newfound religion. When money's put down, there's only one sound that makes OGs and young lions equally proud to listen. The secret amalgamism of algorithm. Amalgamism. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. How long did it take you to write that? Um, I've been working on it like the past week or so. Is, so that, is it normal, like a week for a verse? Um, it's some, sometimes it, it'll be 10 minutes for a verse or a song will write itself. But, you know, um, I try to always be working on something. And whenever uh, I hear a word or I, I'm inspired by something that I might want to revisit later, uh, I make it a point to, to write it down. So I was watching a baseball game last night uh, to see who the mm -hmm. Yankees are going to play in the World Series. Mm -hmm. and, um, and thank you, sir. Jesus, Lord. <laughs> And, you know, I could very clearly say what are the elements that a professional baseball player must master. He's got to throw, he's got to catch, he's got to hit, right, he's got to run. What are the elements of an MC that, that, that to be a great MC, what, what are those, what would be a five tool or six tool, what would, what would we be talking about? Um, I mean, I think to be a great MC, you have to be, uh, you know, obviously knowledgeable of uh, the English vocabulary. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, you need to be conscious of, of uh, the, qu the quality of, of your craft, you know? What do you mean the quality of your craft? Uh, well, you know, you need to, it, your, your, your craft, like the, 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 your, your, your 
skill, your level of skill should matter. It has to matter to you in order to be an MC. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you know, you can't be an MC and say, man, I don't even, I don't even you know, write this shit. You know what I mean? I don't even, uh, you know, I don't even, I ain't no rapper, man. I don't even be rapping, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, which I feel like uh, for some, some, newer, some of the newer artists, that's, that's what they pride themselves in. You know, mm. And not in, in being the antithesis to what, what we call uh, an, an, an MC. You know, um, I feel like you need to be able to uh, perform um, in front of people. You need to uh, be able to, to make the, the English language work for you. Like in that way, the, the, the amalgamism thing. You know, for some people might say, oh, you made that word up, but you, you kind of know what it means. And there's something to be said about a person who can make up a word. Oh, that's dope. You know, and still convey uh, its, its meaning to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like those, these are all uh, uh, skills that, that an, an MC should kind of possess. Um, you know, breath control um, you know, is, 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 is another huge one. But yeah, I mean, I think it, more than anything, you, you need to you need to uh, be read, be be well read, and, and to no, you don't you don't you don't need to. Be, you just need to be knowledgeable of of words and, and how they fit together, and knowledgeable of uh, how to set a scene and, and and tell a story. Is there a book that you've read that you wish all MCs would read? Hmm. Yeah. The. Uh, the uh, Webster Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. You've read the dictionary? <laughs> I mean, nah, not cover to cover, but I mean, you know, <laughs> I think... It'd be um, like Malcolm in prison, like, Howard yeah. Clark. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah. A book that I think, that I wish every rapper would read. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I just wish, you know, Read Rappers more. would read more. <laughs> when you reference breathing, I heard some giggling, but that's an extraordinarily important part of it. And yeah. circular breathing is yeah. a critical uh, tool for rappers to be able to rap longer than a normal person would be able to talk. Right. Talk about what is circular breathing and how do you employ it? Um, circular breathing is, 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 uh, is just that. It's like rationing out. Not even circular breathing is uh, is breathing from the, the diaphragm, as opposed to from the chest, and it's uh, you know reaching deeper into one's uh, you know, self in order to project a you know sound, and uh, it's uh, a technique used by orators and uh, you know, vocalists, singers, uh, people who sing in the opera as well as, you know, people, just public speakers. So, um... And what does it allow you to do? I mean, it allows you to articulate uh, without losing your breath, and it allows you to resonate uh, sonically with everyone in the room in, in a different way. It, it, you know, it gives you a, a, a... It gives depth and dimension to uh, the, 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 the voice. Are you doing it now? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> who are some orators outside of hip hop who have inspired you or helped you see like, that's the kind of vocal artist I want to be? Mm -hmm. Famous or not famous? Ah, oh, man. Oh, that's a, that's, that's, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, you know, mo people like old uh, uh, pastors of, of, yeah. of you know, like Baptist ministers and like church preachers. I think um, my style was, was you know, probably inspired by you know some some of those guys somewhere. I down the line. I had a feeling that you were going to say that. Yeah. To that question, and I I didn't I didn't know quite why I thought that, but I, I thought you would say that a Baptist preacher. Yeah, I think there. there's something about uh, the placement of the breath that is taken, you know, which we, we spoke about this before too. It's, uh, there's a point at which, you know, you can take a breath 
and articulate a sound, or, you know, get a word or get a syllable out at the same time. And um, yeah, well, when, when you, it's like being underwater and you come up and get to take that one breath of fresh air. It's like uh, it, 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 it fuels the fire for uh, a little bit of the way, you know what I mean? Um, from one breath, a, 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 a minister or an artist like myself is able to, you know, speak and project for many more minutes before taking another breath. Yeah. So yeah, I think um, I was definitely inspired by by you know, church pastors and stuff like that. When we talk about breathing, I've been thinking about pausing a lot, right? Because right. I'm working with Rakim on a book with him, and he talks about writing the rhymes out and planning where he's going to pause. Yeah. And I'd never heard an MC talk about, about that. Um, but you, do you think about where you're going to pause to get the rhythmic uh, sort of explosion that you want? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, you know, if I write a verse or a song, uh, as I go over it in, in my head, you know, I'm, I'm making mental notes of, of where it's best to, to take a breath. You know, just to, to maximize, uh, I guess, the potential of, of said breath. I think my favorite pause of yours, um, there's a line that I love, and, I, and it's in my playlist of when I'm running, because it's an upbeat song, but you say, I'm a threat like alcohol, tobacco, and there's a little pause, oh, and, yeah. it, and firearms, and yeah. it totally changes where, you were, where I thought you were going yeah. with the thought. And it's like, wow, like, you know what I mean? The pause makes the huge difference of it yeah. becoming two thoughts right. rather than just, you know, I'm a threat like the ATF. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. all right, that's a very simple thought. But when I thought you were going this direction, then you flip it and it's like, it just explodes in the mind that much more. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a pause that was planned or did that come out in the studio? Um. It was it was definitely uh, uh, planned. Like that's 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 the way that I write. You know, um, I want you know there to be. I want you to think that the natural progression of what what I'm saying or what I've written is one thing, and then you know to wow you when you realize that you know, my I intended something totally different. You know. So when when folks talk about black thought, there's generally two schools of thought. He's one of the greatest of all time. He's underrated. He should be rated higher than he is. Do you think you're one of the greatest of all time? Do you think that you are underrated? I def I, uh, today, I think I'm one of the greatest of all time. And, and, and then, you know, I'm, sometimes I, I feel underrated. But when we get into ratings, like I've never seen myself underrated. You know what I'm saying? Like when people are rate, ranking artists, ranking MCs, rappers of all time, or you know, dead or alive or whatever, I'm you know, I, 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 I'm always in that top ten. So yeah. I mean, I, don't, I fe't like that's not. I mean, there've been you know millions of I don't know millions, but there've been so many other artists you know to to have come before. I came out, and you know, since I've been out here doing my thing, that um, yeah, I feel like that's a, a, a great company to, to sort of be in. Are you still a fan of hip hop like you were when you were back in Philly and, and, and trying to get in, or no. has your ardor cooled? Um, it's no. cool. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan of, of hip hop in that, in that way. Um, you know, it's lost, uh, it's, it's luster. For, I don't, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a jaded sort of artist now and uh you know but that i'm a, I'm a champion of of hip-hop and an and, and ambassador of of the arts no less sure you know but um i mean i don't know who in your youth the, you know there, there's something to be said about about being introduced to something like growing up with something sure you know with uh with the arts um, that at, at, it always changes at some point, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I wonder, yes, there's that, and like jazz could not continue to shock once its, its lessons are yeah. taken into the culture. Rock and roll cannot continue yeah, to exactly. shock. And I think 
some of us are a bit surprised to get to because we thought hip hop would always be shocking. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not. sure you know those jazz guys and and you know the people who were recording rock and roll when it was still you know awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they felt you know that it was something that would never end too. But at some point. It, it, you know, it, it always, fought, it, I don't know, it changes. I mean, I, I, take it a step further, because the last, because uh, the Roots had uh, an incredible man as their manager, Rich Nichols, who yeah. passed away a few years ago, but he's, he's an incredible brother, brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and he, the last sort of philosophical argument that I had with him, he was like, hip hop is dead. And I'm like, how could you say that? And he was like, you know, its ability to shock is gone, and that is yeah. critical to what it is. I agree. So, do you agree that hip hop is dead? Yeah, hip hop as we knew it, you know. Yes, I agree. I agree with with Rich in that. You know, its its ability to shock is is gone. Is it, is it is there something that could be done to? Bring it back, I mean, or are we talk about like, you know, the, the ability shock is gone, this thing is in the suburbs, like we got to pick up something new and move on. Well, no, you know, the sad part about what can be done and, you know, what is being done to, to, to bring it back is just the, the state of affairs, you know, uh, the, 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 the sociopolitical state of the world we live in and, and conditions. I feel like that, you know, begat hip hop uh, in the beginning, and that, you know, from that, whatever's going to be next is 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 going to come. You know what I mean? Um, it'll be, it won't be, it, there'll never be hip hop as you and I knew it in the '70s and '80s and '90s mm. again. But you know, they're, they're, hip hop can still exist because the conditions that you know kind of called for there to be a hip hop still exist. <laughs> I, I know there are things that I can do as a writer that I couldn't have done 15 or 20 years ago, things that I can convey. Mm -hmm. um, are there things that you can do as an artist, as a rapper? And I mean, like, technically, not, not that things have opened up because you're a star, but that things you've learned that you can convey now that you couldn't do 10 or 15 years ago? Um, yeah, you know, I feel like I'm able to tap into a far more uh, uh, personal, vulnerable, um, mortal you know, side of myself as an artist now you know, than, I, than I was you know, 10 or 15 or you know, 20 years ago. You know, um, I feel like it, it, it's something that has evolved over time, and I feel uh, the ways in which I presented myself as an artist over time have kind of, uh, you know, created, uh, a, not a demand, but, you know, almost like created a mystique where, you know, people who are, who are into me, or who are, who are, who are fans of, of, of The Roots uh, have kind of wanted to, to, you know, wanted access into a different dimension of, of myself as, as an artist, you know? So, um, I don't know, I feel like it, where before or earlier in my career, um, you know, it was it was the the way I wrote, especially when talking about uh, the craft, was more you know, just presenting myself as a as the all powerful, you know, the uh, almost as immortal, you know. Um, now I feel like it's it's acceptable to deal with uh, you know, mortality. You were in that. Uh... James Brown movie that Chadwick Boseman <laughs> starred as James Brown, which was a fantastic film. I was. And there was a great moment when James is rehearsing the band, and he's like, and you had the trumpet, right? Uh, not saxophone. Yeah, I, was, saxophone. I was playing uh, Pee Wee Ellis. And he's like, what, what are you holding? And he's like, it's a, no, it's a drum. Yeah. Right? And you see, James saw every instrument as a drum, and you yeah. can hear that. Um, and you know about that because when you get in the pocket and you get yeah. in the rhythm, you're one of the drum. You are a drum, yeah. right? Within. So, uh, can you just convey sort of the feeling of what it's like to when you really get in the pocket and you're riding it and you're a drum within the sound, within the rhythm? I don't. I don't know that I can. You know, um, it's a feeling that's really hard to describe. 
Um, but you, you know, when when you're there, you 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 know that you're there, and sometimes it's almost you know it's overwhelming. You know what I mean? Uh, the 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 you it's just, just a feeling of, of satisfaction, a, a euphoric feeling of uh, I don't know. It's, it's 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 hard to describe. It seems from the outside like it might be like what athletes talk about when they get in the zone and they you know the basket is huge or yeah yeah you know, whatever. Yeah. It's I, I I think it's a lot like that. You know, like when you're in the zone, you kind of you kind of know it. How do you practice? <laughs> Your voice is killing. How do you? Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm nah, sorry. Man. I'm, no, no, we're doing it. Here it is. So, um, how do you? How do you practice? <laughs> is that better? Is that better? I, uh, uh, I don't. I don't really practice. You know, I practice in in real time. You know, I'm always actually recording something or actually, you know, writing for. You know, it's not really hypothetical. So uh, if I'm rehearsing, it's for something that, uh, like, I'm going I'm to be applying that rehearsal later that day or something, sure. you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't really uh, rehearse in that way. Um, I, I have. I've, you know, rehearsed. I've practiced for thousands of hours, but it's just something that I don't, I don't do anymore. So at this stage, you know, I, and I mean just practice in general for being an MC, not for a specific Oh, well, I mean, you know... For being an MC, you, I mean, you have to stay sharp. You know what I mean. You have to keep your. So how do you do that? Uh, um, you have to rap. You have to do it. You know, you have to do it. Uh, you don't always have to be, you know, battling someone. But um, you know, friendly competition is, is is always good. It's good to you know surround yourself with with other like-minded artists who you kind of respect. Um, yeah, you, you always be. You know, always be creating. You know, that's 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 our practice. So, beyond for the next generation of MCs, for the guys who aren't, we haven't heard yet, but who are coming up. Mm. What's the advice? What's the direction? What do you want to see out of them? Um, you know, the I, guys and women. That was not meant. Yeah, yeah, I know, I, I know what you meant. I mean, you know, I, I would, I want them to be, uh, uh, I guess, fearless in their, in their, you know, creativity, um, and less concerned with the, the trends. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. When you say fearless, that is really important, and that is a quality that you see over and over in so many MCs, mm -hmm. in what they say, in you know, how they present themselves. And I remember talking to KRS-One about these sort of things, and he said that a hip-hop song is like a confidence sandwich, in yeah. that the listener will put it literally, figuratively, into their mouth and repeat the words, and you build the confidence yeah. that the MC had and then you're ready to go attack the game or your day or your workout or whatever it is. Do you, do you, are you talking about that same sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, I feel like at, at its best, that's, you know, that's how, how it works, you know? Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, your, your, your music can, I mean, has the potential to become a confidence-affirming mantra. <laughs> What are some of your favorite words? Um, I don't know, man. It's hard right now. I don't, for some reason, I can't think of any, any words, man. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Is there another one up there that, like, yesterday I had to get algorithm in, I got that in? What's the next one that you've got to get in somewhere? Um, let me see. What have I been thinking of? I've been thinking about uh, the word vehicular. For a while, I was I fixated on the word uh, obsidian, and uh, I used that you know, a couple years ago, 
in a, a freestyle. It's like you know, sometimes. Would you rhyme that with? Oh man, it was in the verse that I used uh, when I was speaking at Harvard a couple years ago. I think I, I rhymed obsidian with. Uh, I said black as obsidian, um, black as oblivion, black as the sky at midnight out to meridian. I'm black as a portrait with Diddy, Tupac, and Biggie in. Uh, black as the influence on the culture we're living in. So all of that was just so I could use the word obsidian. Obsidian. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the... Uh... Let me get one more. What's your your top five all-time MCs? Mm, top five all-time MCs for me, um, Rakim, Cool G Rap, Big Daddy Kane, KRS-One, uh, Chuck D. In that order? Today. In yeah. that order, yeah. It, well, oh, no, in no particular order. In no particular order. In no particular order. Um, yeah, today. You know, or uh, tomorrow, it might be, uh, you know, Ice Cube, uh, Grandmaster Kaz, uh, Kumo D. You know, I mean, they're, they're it's interesting that you are still prizing the folks from that earlier generation, mm -hmm. which was a more monosyllabic, no internal rhymes, generally less complex, technically complex than the generation that you're part of, which is polysyllabic, internal rhymes, yeah. a lot of complexity. Yeah, because I feel like. Uh, that's where what it is that, that I do and what, what my you know, generation does yeah. sort of came from. So you know, I, I, when people ask me who my top five, who my top ten, it's always artists who kind of made me want to do what it is that, that I do. The last thing, man, you are superstar on television every <laughs> night. You know, you're like, yeah, the other day when I was speaking at Harvard, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, and, and did you catch my HBO show, The Deuce? Uh, you know, I mean, I was with the Dallas Symphony. <laughs> and, and not saying these things uh, in any, you know, way, you know, any, any, any non-humble way, but just you're, you're living large and you came from the streets of South Philly, right? Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. mean, like, do you, do you ever say, like, damn, like, I have come a long way? Yeah, I say that every day. I say that every day because I come from... You know, when I was a young person, when I was uh, 15 years old, for instance, I didn't, you know, there wasn't much that I believed or believed in just because I, you know, I didn't have any, I didn't have a, a reason to, you know? Uh, if you would ask me what I was, what I saw myself doing at 25 or 30 when I was 15, I couldn't see myself, you know, still being here on this earth just because who, who, who lived to be that old? Wow. You know, I, show me five people from the neighborhood who are 30 and still here. And were your parents gone at that point? Well, my, my father, both my parents are murder victims. Uh, give, me, give, me, give me one second while you talk about his father. Please. <laughs> now, both, both my parents are murder, murder victims. My father, uh, when I was super young, like uh, before I turned two, and my mother uh, when I was 16 years old. So... Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm thankful and, and, and just grateful every day because I feel like, uh, you know, my trajectory was something totally different. <laughs> Thanks, man. <Yeah. laughs>